What's up, guys? Welcome back to the E Hung Podcast, and today we will have another repeat guest, Mr. Faisal Rigusan, CEO of Far Capital, to share and kind of conclude the year for us. Because now it's December already, 2023. Moving forward, the biggest questions that a lot of audience request for you to come back actually. Okay. Uh, then a lot of them is thinking like, hey, how are how are 2023 is like uh, good and bad mix. What about 2024? But before we get the answer, right? How are you? Uh, it's been a long year. We just came back from Indonesia, also, right? Just came back from Indonesia. There's a lot of change uh, as far as the business is concerned. Mm. We are navigating the business in preparation for IPO two years from now. La. Ooh. So, yeah, uh, it has been very, very challenging. The last 30 days, one of the hardest 30 days of my life, but I enjoy it. I somehow believe that I really, really do well in crisis. Uh, crisis is when I normally, you know, wake up. La. Oh. Uh, otherwise, operating at 40% capacity. Che. So, during crisis, can go up to 70. Mm. Uh, so, uh, how was 2023 for you? Um, I think 2023 has been quite interesting. We made a stupid bold prediction four years ago, right? And and during the, the height of COVID, during the height of lockdown, and when they begin to drop interest rate, we basically made a prediction that there will be a property bull run that potentially could happen as a result of a central banks reducing interest rates uh, mm. across the board, right? That has so far been proven correct in most developed countries. Malaysia is not your developed country, so we are always <laughs> lagging. <laughs> so slowly but surely, mm. uh, right? Uh. But uh, we've seen uh, US, uh, UK, Australia market, the Canada, uh, property prices went up like crazy as a result of a low interest rate environment. And we've seen something similar happening in Malaysia from science point of view. So the prediction here is that 2020, 2021 recession years, 2022, 2023 recovery, 2024 is supposed to be the beginning of the next property bull run. Of course, when central bank uh, increases interest rate quite rapidly, in my opinion, I thought there is a possibility of a property bull run might be delayed because, you know, interest rate went from about 3% to about 4% mm. in less than a year, right? Data, however, indicated that no, no, we're not slowing down. I don't know whether you have actually looked at the latest data by NAPIC. Four yeah. quarter three. Interestingly, uh, there's a couple of very promising signs. Number one, from a property transaction point of view, uh, we are doing something comparable compared to last year. Last year was a freak year, as you know, mm. 2022. We we did the third highest number of transactions in the last 15 years. Mm. Right? So, so since the last property bull run, this is the third highest. Sorry, in the last 15 years, right? So it's, for me, it's very interesting. But from a price point, point of view, it only inches a little bit higher. Right, so there's no major, but that very active number of transactions last year. This year, however, is the reverse. Number of transactions didn't grow as much, especially plateaued and flat. But that means we're going to maintain this year is going to be the fourth highest then, mm. which is still quite respectable after the growth of last year for number of transactions. But what's more uh, amazing for me here is that quarter three numbers are basically saying that the value of quarter three this year versus quarter three last year average transaction went up by nine percent. Mm, mm, mm. Now those are bull run. Indicators. Numbers. Uh. Mm. So when your growth is above 7%, these are typically a bull run numbers. Then everywhere else, if you look at property guru data, they basically put in a nice chart, simplified. That's the only, I guess, most reliable demand data as of today because they control uh, the two top websites, which is iProperty and Property Guru. So demand has basically gone up. Mm. Supply has gotten you know, just slightly up. And I think if you can see from your rental property, my rental property, our you know, mm. thousands of units of client rental property. Rental has gone up across the board. Yeah. By at least five to ten percent. So in areas, for example, whereby you got some boosters like for example like TRX recently, mm. uh, those numbers has gone up even more furious. Yep, yep. Right? Yep, so yep. things are uh, looking quite promising. La. So twenty twenty three I thought it's gonna be a slow year after a spectacular twenty twenty two. Uh doesn't look like it. Despite interest rate actually went up by about one percent. So people are still buying. Uh and more importantly rental has basically gone up. So when rental has basically gone up, normally that also pushes property prices to go up too. Mm. So in markets like, for example, like Johor, we entered Johor four years ago and, you know, a lot of people say we're crazy, you know, Johor is dead. You know, there's nothing there, right? Borders are closed. It's going to be closed forever. I don't know lah, where people get this doomsday. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Uh, uh, negativity lah. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I, I think some people are just born like that, right? Yeah, So yeah. we're always positive people. Yeah, we are crazy Sunshine, people. Sunshine, <laughs> wake up, you know, uh, look <laughs> forward yeah, yeah. to today, you know? And mm. some people are... Uh, Everyone is terrible, yeah. right? So, so Johor, for example, uh, in some of the properties that we bought and managed for clients, and you know we buy a lot in Johor, mm. we've seen rental increase of 20% year and year. 
Now that's crazy. Not just rental has gone up year on year, even for example, from an average property price point of view, you've seen a double digit increase in Johor. So there's no surprise that the highest number of launch in the first half of the year is actually coming from Johor. Right? And I guess the last number from NAPIC, which I thought to be quite interesting, is that number of under construction property being sold in the third quarter basically went up about 40% versus last year. So these are all better than expected signs. And I thought we have a flailing economy where neither here nor there. No growth is not supposed to be good this year. Next year, they're expecting a 3% growth. Mm. But one of my mentor is a, you know, an endeavor. One of my mentors is a board member for one of the top three largest banks in the country. And they are talking about 2 or 3% growth next year for Malaysia. But mm. from a property market point of view, uh, doesn't seem like it's slowing down. Mm. Mm. So then, if you were to rate ABCD 2023, it's a... I don't know, man. Because, you know, we always expected 2023 to be a recovery year. So... Mm. You know, if it's going within expectation, what we predicted three to four years ago, mm. you know, it's like average, law. Average, right? Because we we are not expecting the market to be bad. I mean, we don't think the market is going to be bad. Mm. There's just no way. Uh. But the other interesting data would be uh, the number of under construction property newly launched, and planned supply continue to be low. Mm. So one of our prediction many years ago is that this current the COVID will basically resulted in very low supply environment while the demand remain constant because if you look at the data of number of people coming into job market job stream for the next 10 years it's actually the same as per the last 10 years mm. so from a demand point of view we were expecting it to not be lower because the number of people entering the workplace same ah, yep. about 7 to 8 million ah, if you just go to the department of statistics you know all of that uh, very very positive indicator for property market 2024 i think will be a good year mm. especially when us is projected to cut interest rates yeah, I was just going there. Right? If they cut interest rate, the room for us to increase interest rate basically went down to zero. Mm. So there is a higher probability of an interest rate cut, right? Mm. Than an interest rate increase. Increase, hike. right? For 2024. So I think if at the current interest rate, we're already having this kind of demand, drop in interest rate will just, mm. you know, catapult the whole thing. Lah. So, you know, we, you know, our, you know, <laughs> our next couple of, uh, you know, million and, and, yeah, and, yeah. and, and Pate Phillips is, uh, you know, yeah. banking on that, lah, basically. He so, so he's, 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 he's like literally like, yeah, mm, <laughs> mm, you know, he's, he's, you know, yeah, my watch dia menggeling yeah. kepala, <laughs> tapi sebenarnya, oh my God. <laughs> right? Just now you mentioned like Johor market has been very, very promising, right? And like now with the recent... RTS announcement like construction is there. Our dear Sultan of Johor has been crowned king, right? Congratulations! Like he won't see this, like, I think. So many other news, right? Like, is it then a right time for Johor? Like now for you? You know us. You know our yeah. philosophy is that there's no such thing as the right time. Mm. All right, there's only such thing as the right price. Mm. Right price, wrong time, you'll make money. Mm. Right, so 2020 was you know no one say it's a good time to go buy property, right? So a bunch of people who bought property in 2020, 2020 you know, following our advice, very happy, mm. very very happy today. But no one will tell you it's the right time to go and buy. Crazy, uh, border closed, no expat, blah 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 blah, you mm. know. But because most people sentiment who are like that, if you can play the contrarian thinking, mm. then you tend to do quite well because you go into market where things are undervalued. So for me, there's no such thing as the right time. There's only such thing as the right price. Okay. Right, so if you enter the right price, timing doesn't really matter. Timing will help make you a little bit more. But you enter the wrong price, right timing, <laughs> still gonna lose money. Yeah. Right, you pay a thousand per square foot, for example, in Kota Damansara, poof, not gonna happen. Uh. Mm. You know what I mean? But if you pay, for example, six hundred per square foot in Monkera today, right time, wrong timing, who cares? Mm. The average market value is nine hundred anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? So so similar, for example, we buy today things at below replacement cost. Our next, for example, deal will be somewhere in the prime area of Selangor. A rich pan area, lah, right? Mm. Uh, Bukit Julutong. And we are entering at less than 400 ringgit per square foot. And that's less than 400 units, bro. Mm. No, 4,000 units. Mm. So at this kind of price point, you can never go wrong. Mm. right? We go to Johor, you buy at below 400 ringgit per square foot from y- what used to be 1,002. Then we are buying it below 400 ringgit per square foot and you know what we're buying and it's just you know there's just no wrong timing uh. mm. right it's just right price right price fix everything like buying watches uh. <laughs> 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 me with this thing uh, <laughs> you know, you know? Uh, now people start commenting hey, what watches are <laughs> you <laughs> 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 but then like, so okay that's down south right so I think lately because of the news and all I think everybody has this question but like you said like, all this while it has been great 
What about Penang? You are not as active in Penang. Any reason for that? We are investors. Look, I, I love Penang. But as an investor, I, I find it very difficult to value Penang. Mm. Because Penang's uh, value has always been driven by scarcity mentality. Mm. So it's largely emotion rather than the facts. So you know how we look at things, right? So we, we look at the rental, the income the property can generate before we decided what price to enter. Does that make sense? Yeah. Which is why we don't do anything below 5% rental yield. Mm. It is incredibly difficult unless you buy low cost and pump in 15 foreign worker inside your low cost in Penang to get above 5 to 6% rental yield. Mm. It's relatively quite easy to go and do that. In KL or Johor, you add one room, you know, done. Yeah. Now you can get above 6%, right? So in KL today, with the partition ban, even without the room, you can still get 5.56%. Mm. Right? So if you can add one room, pump, become 6 to 7%. Uh. Penang is a classic uh, example of whereby because the market is driven by emotion and scarcity. And you know, island, next Singapore, Hong Kong, you mm. know that story. Lah, uh. mm. So which to me has always been bull****. Uh. <laughs> right? <laughs> but people like Penang. People mm. get emotional mm. uh, when they talk about Penang. Right? Uh, but the reality of Penang here is that Penang is not even top three from an average income point of view. It's not top three or average income point of view, not top three in job growth point of view, mm. right? So where's the demand mm. if you're going to invest in Penang going to come from? So the reality is that people just buy because of scarcity or emotion whereby I want to retire that one day. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that it's very hard to quantify mm. because at the end of the day, investment firm, right? We do investment analysis. So it's just very hard to quantify when will this emotion make sense? You know what I mean? Yeah. So in KL and Johor, Right, whereby you've got the highest number of job growth, you have highest number of infrastructure investment, you've got highest number of booster, and income wise is uh, growing strong year on year. So it's just easier to quantify, and the property price point is actually cheaper. Mm. Yeah. That's just the reality, right? So we don't buy Penang, not because we don't like Penang, you know? not because I have hatred towards Penang people and mm. I don't like your chakra. Mm, yeah. No such thing, right? Yeah. We just don't buy Penang because the number doesn't make sense. Mm. Similar to how we don't buy KK. Right, because you know KK property is just crazy, ridiculously <laughs> expensive. It's like, mm. Right, and because of the economy environment over there, it's just difficult to build something there. Right, and Penang is somewhat similar. So you know, if you look at the average private condo there, you are looking at about six to seven ringgit per square foot. But to find anything that can give you a rental above two thousand in Penang or two thousand four in Penang, is super hard. Yeah. Right, because Penang people are very smart with money. Did I tell you the story about this private equity who couldn't figure out why Penang gym is bleeding money? No. Their OPEX is higher. So this is a fantastic story to describe Penang. Eh? Okay. Okay. So we segue a little bit. Eh? You know, I used to work for Stanchart, right? Mm. Right. So so as a banker, I go to Penang branch and we look at our wealth management business. So the highest deposit is actually coming from Penang. So to say Penang people don't have money, mm. Penang people got a lot of money mm. and they store cash. Right? So that's number one. But... There's a story that illustrates the kiamsapness in a way. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no other state like that, right? Mm. So, I went to a, it was a, a talk by a private equity, one of the largest private equity in Malaysia, and one of the first ones. Right? So, you know, they bought all these chains of fitness first, uh, celebrity fitness, yeah, all belongs yeah. to them, right? So, they, they bought it. So, they have exposure and regional. They couldn't figure out why. Why? Right? Only in Penang branches, outlets, that the uh, cost of miscellaneous item like sabon, <laughs> tissue, paper, is three times higher compared to anywhere else. <laughs> These guys couldn't figure it out. So if, for example, everywhere else is 5%, yeah. only for the Penang branch, 15 mm. So after months of investigation, they find out that the Penang gym goers literally bring empty bottles and when they go and shower, they actually pump the soap. <laughs> and then they bring it back. And not just that. Toilet paper so. So only in Penang, bro. So I don't know what it is. It's usable. <laughs> Seriously? Uh, I'm not s***ing you. This is a private equity. So this Angmo guy is like, why? Mm. You know, cannot brain. So like I said, uh, Penang people are smart. They're not gonna pay you above average rental, so that's the moral of the story, right? Mm. So that's why you don't see above two thousand ringgit rental, unless maybe it's a one million ringgit condo, mm. right? It's very very hard to go and see something like that in Penang. So you couple with uh, Penang people generally very very smart with money, careful mm. money, combined with lower job growth, very high property price, 
rent the below 4%, mm. 3%, it just doesn't make sense for us. Uh, how to justify? Because you're just betting on the fact that the only way you make money out of paying property, because you, you don't get cash flow, for sure, mm. is that when property value goes up. Mm. So when do you predict property value go up? I, I'm not God. No one, mm. no one knows. Mm. Right? So for me, it's very easy to predict when the property value will go up if your rental yield, for example, 7%. Mm. Right? So normally, over time, your rental yield will go down to about 5, 5.5, averagely to the area, right? To match the rest of the property in the area. So yep. as a result, property value will go up. Mm. Very straightforward, right? From a numbers point of view. But, it, you know, any market which is emotional, we don't go in. The macros are not correct, we don't go in. Simply because it's just hard to predict. And of course, we are looking after people's uh, well, people's retirement fund, you know, mm. we are making, trying to make sure people don't get negative cash flow. So it's just a completely different consideration. So anything that the math doesn't work out, we don't do it. Strictly right. numbers. La. Strictly numbers. Strictly it's an numbers. investment. La. So basically, it has to be strictly numbers. Mm. We are not buying below replacement cost in Penang, like what we can do in Selangor, Kuala Lumpur or, or Johor. So again, there's not much opportunity. Mm. Then what you think about like leisure locations, like vacation locations like Langkawi, ah, Genting. Don't buy. Don't buy. Yeah. Don't, don't buy. Remember, yeah. we, we, we follow seven criteria, right? Yeah. So yeah. one of the criteria, last one is multiple rental strategy. Holiday mm. homes, only got one rental strategy, mm. which is holiday home. La. Right? So, so typically, holiday season, you do well. When border close, you're dead. And holiday homes, if it's cheap, it's okay. But most holiday homes don't sell cheap. Your Langawi, your Genting, and all that is all selling one thousand per square foot and above. Mm. And you know today we are buying Bukit Bintang at those mm. kind of price point. Ah. so do I buy at one thousand per square foot? Do I buy Bukit Bintang? Mm. Or do I buy Langawi? I buy Bukit Bintang lah because got people go for holiday, you know, Bukit Bintang. Got More than Langawi, yeah. right? Yeah. But at the same time, I've got your TRX next door. I've got hundred thousands of high value jobs being created so the rental demand is not limited only to people who are going for holiday so we want to buy property whereby from a rental point of view you're not relying only on one particular segment because if you rely on one particular segment if that industry did then the property die together along with the industry mm. so uh, you know if you buy college accommodation and the college does well okay your property do well college die your property die together mm-hmm. right you buy, for example, holiday homes once the border locked down, or for example, you buy somewhere in the hill, and then there's a flood or 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 some catastrophe, right? Mm. And people don't go there anymore, and then your property die together. There is a more than ninety five percent probability of failure on resort based investments, not just in Malaysia but globally. Mm. So your odds of making it is like five percent. Mm. You know. If I were to t- tell you something, right? Hey, you only have a five percent chance of uh, making money, you know, ninety five percent chance of losing money. It's not a smart move, lah, to say oh, I'm yeah. gonna be special. Yeah, <laughs> I will be the special five percent. Yeah, it, it's uh, you know, it never. Mm. <laughs> and, and it's cheaper to just rent there during your holidays, lah. Yolo. Don't need to rent. Don't right. need to own a holiday home, lah. Yeah. So for me, I, I would rather buy Bukit Bintang those kind of property because you know I can use it as a holiday home still, and um, the price is about the same anyway mm. right and you've got multiple job creation multiple usage of the property you've got a lot more infrastructure you know already no matter what care won't die mm. Bukit Bintang will never die mm. right and uh, with the new TRX mall being open uh, things are looking quite impressive la. wow the TRX mall is something else uh. it's completely something else uh. very proud uh, mm. uh, to see this uh. very very proud Phew. yeah mm. so that's why I see the current administration of the country is not bad Mm. Because like the housing ministry and the state housing team is very very active. What do you think of their performance this year? Like let's go one by one. In Penang, they introduce affordable homes cannot rent out to foreign labor. What do you think of that? There's two hats, right? Mm. So as an investor, you want the government or or the ministry to to make it more friendly for people to invest. Mm. But the side effect of that here is that while property value will go up, affordability from a regular people point of view will go down. So from a property investor point of view, it's neither here nor there. Mm. But as a homeowner, as a Malaysian, I think that uh, they're doing a fantastic job. Mm. Right? As a Malaysian, if I wear my Malaysian hat, right, I think they're doing a fantastic job uh, because affordable homes are not meant to be investment. I've said this for years. right, And people always ask me, should I buy rumah prima? Rumah Sangoku, Rumah Wilaya, or local spread for investment. I always, please, mm. right? Don't try to get rich taking a B40 mm. housing stock. Mm. 
it will never end well for you. The Malay community believe in this idea of keberkatan rezeki, you know. So mm. you can make money many ways, but berkat or not? Is it honest money or not? Mm. Right? And I believe that most people are good people. Uh, some people, they don't care. Uh, yeah. Right? So so there's this saying, I don't care what cat catches the mice, what oh, color yeah. is the cat, as long as it catches the mice. Uh. Yeah, there's right? a good cat. Mm. Right? So uh, there's a good cat. Uh. And there's a bunch of people who actually got rich by buying a lot of low-cost housing from, from auction and whatnot, which to me uh, is wrong. Mm. Right? For me, it's wrong. Uh. And I, I completely loud the initiative of the current KPKT leaders banning. Mm. Partition for yeah, the affordable one. housing, right? Uh, partition for low cost housing, uh, allowing low cost housing to be rented to foreigners, right? All of these are killing the supply, killing the affordability, right? And it's just bad, mm. right? So for me, fully supportive of it. I think it can be refined better, especially on the partition ban. But uh, as far as controlled housing, lah, so your affordable housing, which is meant for 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 certain group of people who mm. based on certain income, I think it's a fantastic thing to go do. In fact, I think uh, if I can make a suggestion, they should really get anyone who's renting and anyone who's buying. They must get consent to actually monitor their income annually. Mm. And the moment they hit certain income, this guy should be forced to sell the property, right? At certain discount versus market value. Because it's affordable housing, you yep. bought a discount, you have to sell the discount. You cannot sell a market value, b****, mm-hmm. right? So that we have a better system than Singapore. So Singapore today is still a free market. You buy HDB, right? You buy the discount, but you can sell at market price 10 years later. Yep. Right? Which has basically led to increase of property values and property price. Uh. So, so it's not a perfect system. For me, affordable housing, if you buy the discount, you also have to sell at the discount. Mm. It shouldn't be a free market. That way, the government continuously, without having to build More. one new property, will continuously have affordable housing supply for the next 50 years. Mm. Right? This is a combination of what Singapore is doing and German. Mm-mm-mm. Right? So, you want to get rich from property, go ahead. But don't take affordable housing, don't use affordable housing as a medium. Right? It's not morally correct to go and do so. True that. When I'm free, I go PPR flats. Mm. You will see. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what you do when you're free. <laughs> <laughs> do you wear your watch? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> not, not this one, lah. But but you you see Mustangs. Mm? Correct. You will see Mustangs. You will see M trees. You will see all these kind of rides inside. And they have to basically monitor not just the owner's income but the household income. Mm. So the moment you hit certain, you should be kicked out. You can afford something else. Yeah. And. There's a lot of young people who come to the city from KK and whatnot, earning a thousand eight, thousand nine, and they need these housings. Yeah, that's just the reality. I think with the current government, I think they've got the heart to go and do it. I'm hoping they can continue, continue to protect the vulnerable. Okay, so then the next one, right? It's the build then sell concept. So for those who don't understand, build then sell means the developer needs to build everything first. They only open for sale. Like in your opinion, you work with so many developers, right? I doubt I think a handful of people can only do that and like what do you think of it? I've been involved in various uh, think tank and cabinet discussion related to property I think in the last five years uh, no matter who comes and go we normally get invited um, <laughs> and no matter who comes and go <laughs> <laughs> from a minister <laughs> point of view so, so, uh. so we normally get, get invited and my last one was that uh, there was a very strong case to it trying to push for bill and sell Mm. I don't think it's a bad concept. I just think it's a very unrealistic concept. Mm. Right? Why do I say it's unrealistic? Because we operate in Malaysia and Indonesia, right? so I can see the difference. Mm. Right? So, for example, today, most people don't know the standard of property in Malaysia is far greater compared to Indonesia. For the same price point, it's like three or four times better. Mm. So, when I go to Jakarta, I stay in Escort. So, Escort is like the best quality. Mm. Escort's quality is not better than where I'm staying. <laughs> <laughs> and Escort that one mm. is priced at 2x compared to the price point of my property here Ooh. and the facilities is nowhere near you know I've got four pools two rooftop pool mm. Escort only got one mm. lousy lower ground pool la, mm. right and middle floor pool la. so it's nothing great it got me to think why would the property in Michigan become more expensive so, so for example right there was this one weird property that I went. One of the first days that we look at, we look at the T, right? There's one which is very funny. Uh, like a, what's that? A squid game. Sir. Mm. You know the tuck? So there's a property that looks like a squid game whereby there's a hole in the middle and you can do that tuck thing. So I call it the squid game property in Jakarta. And that property looks like a PPR flat. 
from the outside mm. looks like a PPR flat from a maintenance point of view but selling quite cheaply at just 900 ringgit per square foot 2 hours away from Jakarta 900 it's like you buy something in Rawang but it's not the prime part of Rawang mm. it's like some kampung in Rawang that takes 15 minutes to go to the town center of Rawang and that's 900 ringgit per square foot why is the property value or price point more expensive is simply because the funding environment in Indonesia is very bad so property developer don't get bridging financing mm. So in Malaysia, you can have 10 to 20 percent. Let's say, for example, your GDP is 100 million. Yep. If you have 20 percent of that, mm. you can launch a development yep. already. So if you can sell 80 to 90 percent, you are good. The only capital you need, you need to build a 100 million GDP development is 20 million in Malaysia. Mm. That's under the current scheme. With that, a lot of people can become property developer, right? So when there's a lot of people who can become property developer, that means from a supply point of view, mm. it's not limited to Only the selected the, yeah. few. When you do build and sell, which means you roughly need to have 70% to 80% of the capital up front before you build, guess what? More than half of the property developers in the country oh. wipe out. Gone. Mm. Supply will drop by by at least lah, 50%. Mm. Yep. That's it. Now, what's going to happen? You wipe out most players, you have less option. And even the big ones, instead of launching 10 projects a year, can now launch three. Mm. Because that's the only capital they have. So what will happen to the supplier? We already know from a demand point of view for the next 10 years, it's, it's not going to be lower f- compared to the last 10 years. <coughs> the mm. demand will remain constant. Mm. When your supply drop by 60 to 70% because you do build and sell, it's not looking good for our young people. Lah. For me and you, we're going to be very happy because we already bought property cheap. Yep. No problem. Mm. As an investor, please <laughs> do build and sell. Mm. Right, I'm going to make a couple of million. Mm. Let's go buy some pate. Mm. Right? But <laughs> yeah, for the future generation, I think it's just a horrible idea. Mm. Like I said, very naive from an execution point of view, not understanding the consequences of bill and sell. Mm. Now, I know the reason why they want to do bill and sell. Because they want to reduce the number of abandoned and delayed projects. Yep. So because of this 5,000, 10,000 people who today got stuck because of abandoned, I understand why they want to do bill and sell. It makes sense why they push it. However, the consequences mm. for everyone else is just bad, especially for young people, right? Now, I asked during that meeting, whereby there's a lot of figureheads, right? Uh, you know, all mm. the leaders are I'm one of the youngest, right? Mm. And I asked a simple question. Give me one evidence anywhere in the world whereby you actually produce bill and sell and the property values is affordable. Mm. Dead silence, click, 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 click in the room. Because there's none. Mm. You look at UK, you look at London, you look at Australia. These are markets whereby you do build and sell. The property values are severely unaffordable. Mm. So, from an execution point of view, there's already problem. You're going to kill off supply. You're going to kill off players. And on top of that, the outcome here is that property price will become severely unaffordable just because you want to take the lazy way out mm. to enact something. Which were my arguments against bill and sell. Mm. Look, again, as an investor who already own a lot of properties, yeah. great. Because yeah, yeah. that means everything will shoot up by 50%. Mm. Great. Fantastic for me. Mm. But not so fantastic for other people who just started working. I pity them. Mm. Young people now are wow, mm. tough. Uh, getting tougher and tougher. Yes. So so for me, it's one of the things whereby people, they wanted to solve an immediate problem, but they don't realize that by solving this immediate problem, which affects a couple of thousand of people, it will affect millions of people at the back. Mm, 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 mm. Right? So unless, for example, you've got a policy like Singapore HDB, whereby government owns majority of the land, and you can still develop affordable housing, right? Which we don't. Yep. Because the government don't own many of the land, right? State owns the land. So it's very different. So we can't afford to go and do it. And again, Singapore doesn't do bill and sell. Property price is still expensive. <laughs> Australia does bill and sell. Property prices still crazy expensive. UK is the same. This idea, while it's noble to protect certain group of people, have got a major, huge consequences for the next 10 to 20 years. For me, whatever happens, happens. So saya pasrah. <laughs> you know, I cannot control what the next government is going to do, mm. what the next minister is going to do. I will just take it. No matter what, we'll make money. Mm. So that's the mentality of an investor. But I do pity lah people who 
have to suffer the consequences and to unwind this after you bankrupt multiple development companies and whatnot the recovery will easily take 10 to 15 years Oish. yeah 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 you know what i mean yeah 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 so people don't think mm. right because they saw one case of a single mom or oh, abandoned property and all mm. that we pity that but i think there's a better way to go and do it so for example why don't we allow developer to assess demand first before they actually submit km mm. right use data use interest right to basically collect demand first so that because the reason why property become abandoned is only one no no sales no no sales that's it yeah because developer completely misunderstood the market mm. and most developers are not your m40 or b40 is it yeah yeah so they are t1 <laughs> right just because they like the toilet in thin ridges mm. they think that all housing they build Masa. should have toilet of similar size because otherwise everything too small for me there's so many developer i mean wah you build studio you need 350 square foot lah who's going to rent this yeah yeah i said go picture yourself 30 years ago when you were poor mm. today you cannot mm. right yep and a lot of them seems to forget lah so so when they do do proper research they go to markets develop markets and they go to high end area where everyone is rich everyone buy property don't care about investment they don't care about affordability they can buy property cash so it's a very different market Mm. So I think developer today don't use enough data and because they don't use enough data that's why for example we've got 25,000 property overhang today in Malaysia. And if you look at you know the simple fact here is that people was talk to me property Malaysia oversupply. I said uh you are partially correct. Mm. Right? You only have a case of oversupply when you sell way above median. Mm. So look at the median price point in Johor, 400,000. How much is the average unsold property? Eight hundred thousand is double, and then you wonder why you cannot sell, right? It's like you buy this iPhone. Everyone know the market price is seven thousand, eight thousand. You try to sell fifteen thousand. Mm. Good luck. You think people stupid, man? Mm. Right? Water fee, ha, Everyone. Yeah, you can yeah. get one or two, lah. Yeah. Right, but you cannot get a couple of thousand to be idiot water fee to go and buy your product. La. So, mm. so as a developer, sometimes it's padan muka, lah. You know. Mm. You know, you got too greedy. You didn't do your research. You didn't care about affordability. And therefore, today you got stuck ah, with all this unsold inventory. But the moment they sell at median price point, all the unit move, mm. right? Mm. So it's not a question of bad location, bad property. To me, there's only one thing saja: wrong price. Any property at the right price will be sold. Any property at the wrong size, ah, luck lah, mm. right? So it's simple as that. And for developer who wants to sell high end, they should prove that. For example, let's say for example, they get approval if they want to sell at median. They can launch, mm. right? Let's say a thousand unit, no problem, right? But if one is sell, for example, fifty percent above median, they must show proof that they have fifty percent of the capital to go and complete the project. Does that make uh. sense? So these are using data to really fully understand, right? You know the development capability because if you're gonna base on the assumption of yeah, I'm gonna sell at hundred percent above market value, and I need to get eighty percent sales in order for the project to be completed, there are so many projects that we know this guy not gonna make it. Mm. Right, so it has happened in the past because of uh, irrational exuberance. Right, Warren Buffett and you know uh, the late Charlie Munger will see this. Uh, ha- we have seen the same lah. during bull run. Everyone got greedy lah, and majority of the unsold inventory are selling at least fifty, forty to fifty percent above the median. So, which is why, for example, people will twist the fact. Hey, but the most of the unsold property is within the three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand category. Mm. Right. But reality here is that it's three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand per lease. <laughs> <laughs> so median per lease is hundred eighty mm. or two hundred thousand. I forgot the number yeah, yeah. already, right? So when you sell at two eighty, it sounds cheap for people in KL. But in place people, you think I water fish? Ah, uh? mm. uh, you know, mm. yeah. You think I stupid man? What's a what's a quality term for water fish? Uh, uh, ikan ai, ai ikan lah. And and why is overhang such a big issue to the media and government? Uh? Like <laughs> they they keep biting this oh, oversupply, overhang, oversupply, overhang. No, I think because the developer also always think it's the government's job to make sure that the property market is great, so that they can uh, sell whatever uh, bull price they want, right? So developer job is to lobby that, right? Mm. So every time they cannot do sales, no one look at themselves and say, you know what, I think ah. Uh, I build the wrong property. Mm. No developers actually said that. I've yeah. never met one. Yeah. Right? Every single one to say my product is the best one. Mm. Yeah, 
I got the best toilet bidet in the world. Mm. Right for whatever reason, right? Every single one. No one basically reflect to the fact uh, maybe uh, the reason why you can't sell uh, because you mm. right? <laughs> you are trying to sell a 500,000 oh. property for <laughs> 1 million. Nah. Obviously, la, you mm. think how many people can afford to pay 1 million for a condo in Johor? Mm-mm. Right? How many people can afford to pay a 1 million condo in places like Shalam or Kuchalam? Uh? It's mm. just crazy. Uh. So this is why like I said, most developers actually don't use data to assess demand. Mm. That's just the reality. That's why we have overhang. The moment you reduce price to what is the median in the area, all this unit which is overhang will be gone within a year. Mm. We have proven that in Farcap. Mm. All this property, seven years unsold, the moment they reduce price to what is the average in the area, they will also within six months. You know. Yep. Right? So hundreds of units are gone. Mm. So there's no such thing as a bad property. There's only such thing as a bad price. Okay. Moving on. Vacancy tax. What do you think of vacancy tax? So for those who don't uh, understand, vacancy tax is you will get penalized if your unit is empty. Then it means that if the developer has empty units, not so, they will also need to be penalized. How do I say this? Uh? No. Right, then we can cover. Uh. Okay. <laughs> let, let's, let's assume there's this such thing called the developer b- index. Uh. <laughs> Okay, okay. Courage in the developers' courage. Yeah, index. to go build something, right? Uh. How gang ho is that? So I can say, I think in the last twelve years, I say the developers' <laughs> index has basically dropped to all time low. Uh. okay. Right, you put anything to punish <coughs> them, mm. it's just gonna go lower. Mm. We already have an undersupply problem. Yeah. Right now, I agree with it because it forces the developer to actually launch something more reasonable. Mm. But the problem today is things that they were launched seven years ago, eight years ago when the market was a little bit more irrational. Mm. So if you look at all new launches today, they're actually doing quite all right. Yeah. Right? So they're actually doing quite all right because they're selling at not too high above median. Mm. Right? So they're selling a reasonable price point. So well, I like the idea because it will force the developer to really think. But at the same time, it's already hard as of today. Uh, you got margins being compressed uh, from whatever. So land prices doesn't go down ever, mm. right? Never, right? So you got higher cost of building, higher cost of labor, market uncertainty, and you put in this, the developer will might say, you know what? I'm just gonna sell sayur lah, <laughs> right? <coughs> or ikan, mm. or I open a karaoke center. At least I have fun lah, you know, right? Kapa so also make more money. Kapa also make more money, yeah, la, yeah. right? So I think it's something that we can consider when the market is doing a lot better. Mm. As of today, if we do that, supply will Great. go down even more. So again, as an investor, I'm gonna be very happy. <coughs> I love it when supply goes down. Mm. Yep, yep. Right, yep. because means people are gonna be forced to rent, nothing mm. to buy. You know, so so great for me as an investor. But again, for the young coming Malaysian mm. coming into the workforce, working today, looking to buy the first property in the next five years, it's just horrible news. Mm. Yeah, that's why the the entire government. Proposition lately has always been like all, all these exploring ideas, but yeah. nothing much to be executed yet, which I like. But I like what you say. I think it's a good thing that we have seen housing ministry being so active. Uh, a lot of uh, rumor prima are handing over soon, so we have seen some complaints here and there. But would you advise a young Malaysian to actually get affordable homes for own stay? Yes. Mm. Why not? Right. If you are sad, for example, about staying in that particular area for the next five to ten years, by all means, mm. you know you are buying cheaper below market. Right, you're buying a reasonably priced product. Uh, quality, I don't know. Mm. Right. Uh, we we have seen mixed reviews. Uh, some decent quality. Yeah. Some very good. You buy some cheap, so good. Mm. You buy cheap. You don't expect. You know. Yeah. Uh, too high of a quality, lah. And and again, first time home buyers who are gonna stay there normally has got the most complaint because mm. they've don't experience property like what we do lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For us, minor minor thing we settle lah ourselves, right? So a lot of people don't have this experience, don't have the exposure. So therefore, the view is the house must be perfect, right? Um. So yeah, if you are looking to stay there and not looking to sell anything for the next ten years, then I think it's perfect. Uh, if you are looking at it potentially as a possible property for own stay, let's say for example, if I'm a bachelor today, right? Especially being a man, right? Whereby the responsibility to provide housing, yeah, the family is belongs to the man, right? I will look at buying things that will give me a lot more options. Mm. So for example, if I'm a bachelor today, I would buy a property that uh, I can stay in one of the rooms and I can rent out the other rooms. Or I will buy a property that is 
okay for me to expand my family. Let's say, for example, I intend to have two kids, <coughs> so the unit mm. must be able to go and feed two kids. And the day that, for example, if I in a very exciting industry whereby there's a possibility of me moving out from the state or the country, I wouldn't buy affordable mm. housing because there's limitation in terms of whether you can rent, whether you can sell. Your exit options are actually quite limited, mm. for the right reasons. Because they don't want to encourage speculation. Yep, 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 yep. So for those crew of people who has a bit more of a dynamic, promising future, my suggestion is to buy from open market. Open market, mm. right? Because it gives you the most flexibility. You want to sell, you can sell. You want to rent, you can rent. You want to stay, you can stay. So you know we always use these three criteria to decide old stay property, right? It must be location wise good enough, whereby you're going to be happy staying there because you know it's convenient. You've got your coffee and you know mm. it fits your lifestyle. You can rent. Mm. If you no longer work there, or if you are moving out from the country, you, know, you can rent and you don't lose money, and you don't overpay, la, which means you can o- sell anytime, mm. right? If the property becomes too mafan or too troublesome for you to go and manage, which Rumah Wip or Rumah Prima or Rumah Sangoku or Rumah PPR normally don't give you that kind of option because there's a moratorium. Yep. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Let the intent be pure. Yes. <coughs> yes. I think that's. I think that summarizes the thing. And moving on to 2024, yeah. because I bought properties at the first lockdown release. Huh. Then everybody is like, ah, crazy flur, right? <laughs> Interest rate was 1.6. I still remember. Oof, oof. <coughs> right. <sighs> Then <laughs> the, the days are reminiscing. <laughs> <laughs> so like now, then you make the prediction. Then everyone, wow, oh, Sean, you buck up with him. I don't I barely know you that time. Then any expectation for 2024? In Malaysia, property market. Like I said, because the demand remains constant, so I think the level of activity and transaction in property market will remain to be quite active. Mm. So uh, next year will be in line to what has happened the last this year and last year. So we will remain have most likely is going to be top five from a transaction point of view in the last ten years easily. I expect prices to inch up higher simply because, like I said, there's an undersupply mm. problem as of today. A lot of developers who launch reasonably priced property doing very well, eighty, ninety percent sold within yeah, six months. Yeah, don't need to launch, right? right? And people are queuing, and mm. things will continue. As I mentioned, I've created this thing called the developer b- index, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so we <laughs> need to engineer that a little bit more. But uh, yeah, but we get the gist. Yeah, uh, you got the gist of it, right? Yeah. And you know, the developer b- index is uh, actually from Radar, lah. Basically, mm. so you can just look at Radar report and you can see uh, what's their uh, confidence, confidence in level, launching, uh, right? In launching, uh, and That level of confidence is not high. Yeah, right. It's not high. So I expect smaller number of plays, new plays coming up uh, into the stream or property market. Uh, I expect more people leaving the industry uh, th- from a developer point of view, simply because from a cost point of view, it doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah, they can't do it anymore. I think uh, loans will be more affordable. Right. I think uh, there will be more banks coming up with creative financing. Mm. I think two years ago we only had two or three banks doing step up. Today we have five. Mm. Oh, I expect next year more and more banks will follow, right? Because it's um, it's going to help. This year, one bank came out with a renovation loan, yeah, which can be thirty five year loan. I expect once the big brother come out with such loan, the the, the, the small smaller small one. one will copy as usual, mm. right? Things are going to be quite interesting from a financing point of view. NPL has remained to be quite low, right? Uh, non performing loan for those who don't so mm. non performing loan has been quite low. So I think market wise is quite stable. Rental demand will continue to go up. Uh, especially property with uh, decent boosters, uh, Johor will continue to be active. We've got Agong now coming from Johor. I mm. expect Johor to be the uh, one of the largest infrastructure beneficiary for the next mm. couple <laughs> of years. So you know, I will mm. bet on Johor. Looking very mm. good, lah. Mm. We need right. to get the agency soon, right? <laughs> um, so so <laughs> so, Peto. Uh, I'm not Dara Johor, lah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Like from my perspective, everyone thinks that it's oversupply, oversupply. But we see from the market, like from your cases of closing, uh, from your company, it's undersupply. Mm. I think it's crazy. And now when you say a lot of people are backing down, it means restriction in supply, but demand continue growing mm. because our population is still rising. And young, we have an average of thirty one, so mm. we are still very young from a population point of view. Look at Singapore; average is forty three, forty four now, mm. and property values has not gone down. Mm. Right, so and the so there's a major trend in Singapore today where people are basically, da- in a way, downgrading, moving to another country. Cost too expensive to live there. Mm. So, so the other, you know, Johor looks to be gonna do very well simply because you got pressure, external pressure coming out of Singapore, cost of living too high, mm. right, and all that. 
uh, and people are now looking at Malaysia. You know, if you are B fifty in Singapore, Malaysia is a serious option. Yeah. Right. If you are T twenty in Singapore, okay lah. You go Melbourne, you no know, mm. London, fancier mm. name place. Not better, fancier. Right, but for B fifty in Singapore, I think retirement in 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 Malaysia and Johor is a serious option. I think Penang will be a beneficiary also, mm. because Singaporean in general love Penang. Yep. Despite the rental will continue to be low. Yep. Right. Yep. The property values will continue to climb. So I think from a banking point of view, is that uh, prices will slowly inch up. Rental will go up faster compared to prices. That actually took me by surprise, though. Like the rental rates and currently it's, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Good for us, investors. Good for us, lah. Yeah. But then, like for newbies coming into the workplace, oh, sorry, man. Yeah, so it's it's actually very tough for them, mm. right? So yeah, I think some companies and businesses will close down uh, next year. So I think unemployment might go up mm. as a result because I think, as you know, a lot of businesses are struggling, especially on margins. So we are in a conundrum for the country whereby for a lot of businesses you cannot increase the price because the people can't afford it. Mm. Right, because the income is not growing as fast, so you can't increase prices. Right, so for example, you know, I mean, YPO, I mean, Endeavor. So we are friends with all these people who own many of the brands that you see in malls. Uh. Mm. Right, volume has gone up, margin has completely gone down, and they have got no pricing power to increase because the moment they increase price point, volume will basically drop. So that's the situation that we are in. So I, th- I think it will be a struggle for business. Mm. Uh, simply because from a direction point of view, from an economy point of view, I think we are a little bit directionless. Uh. Mm. I think it's quite clear, evident from our stock market. People don't believe in our story. Our story not convincing enough as of today. Mm. So that's where we are. But having said that, like I said, because of the undersupply, rental will continue to go up. Mm, 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 right? Mm. Subsale price point will continue to move up. If interest rate drops by 50 basis point, mm. then my prediction here is that you're going to have a very active property market, most likely second highest transaction, potentially even the highest transaction. If interest rate drops, mm. but I don't think Bank Negara will do it <coughs> because even after increasing interest rate by 100 basis point, <laughs> it's still going strong, slowing down. Mm. So that's my view, lah. So unless they've got no choice, whereby our currency becomes too strong, which also very unlikely, lah. Mm. Right. <coughs> so I think it will stay. So interest rate won't go up. Most likely, it will stay. There's a higher probability of it going down. If it does go down, woohoo. Mm. <laughs> rental is not going down, right? So yeah. rental not going down. Yeah. Your cost goes down. Nice lah as a property owner. Hello. That's right. Like I think it's important for audiences to like if you are still thinking like whether property is it for me or not. I think it's more of a personal thing because I think Malaysia is very covered in terms of risk and whatever. We are just very blessed. Like all the fight things and all. We are not. We are playing in our own bubble. Small little sandbox. And I guess that's about it for today. So I think it has been a very exciting 2023 for me. I'm busy acquiring properties from your side, <laughs> so still not enough. Still fighting for a few more. Like we think got three more weeks, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and uh. that and that resonates with a lot of people. Like if you are still concerned, you are right. You are still concerned about the oversupply, about the risk. You are right. But if you are within the insider circle, you are wi- within the informed circle, then you know what's going on. And I think a lot in the room also they they also tell me, "Wow, Sean, I buy it. Like the rental, like no need money." Yeah, true. And I guess that's the intention of the podcast today. Thank you for sharing your insight on everything. Happy Hope the best. Happy New Year for those who are watching. Merry Christmas if you are celebrating. I don't. <laughs> so I guess that's all. Thank you very much again. Any last words you want to say? On the oversupply bit, only happens for property which is harga y- reasonably priced property. No such thing as oversupply, guys. So that's all I can say. Number one, and I think I echo what Sean was basically saying. We as a market, we don't really give a f, mm. right, about what happened globally. So globally had. Property buran, we slowly naik, mm. right? When property prices crash in the US or UK, today because high interest rate, we still continue to slowly naik. We really don't <laughs> give no a correlation, toot, uh. right? It hasn't affected us uh, in that way in the last twenty years. Uh. So the only time we got affected is when the ish ASEAN financial crisis, mm. uh, because we are the second country, yep. right? That had a currency crash. But other than that, what happens globally has got very little impact. Mm. So yeah, so US might go to recession next year. I can guarantee you, property values in Malaysia will not go down. We didn't increase interest rate from three percent in US during COVID to now eight percent, mm. right? So when we don't have a increase, massive increase of interest rate in short period of time, you don't have a property crash. You do it gradually. So our bank negara, to be honest, quite smart. 
A lot of good people. No. A lot of very good people. So I have a lot of faith. The reason why we have economic stability as of today, we don't have a market crash, and property values will continue to go up because we have a good central bank. Mm. Right? Okay. Okay, thanks. Bye. See you guys on the next one.